Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another standard video. I'm playing Alexander Mitrofanov, rated 2215. We got a D4, D5 game. I'm thinking about trying to work in a Catalan, although it's a little hard against D4, D5 in some instances, like if they play a Slav. But okay, Black is playing uh, a Queen's game at decline, so let's play G3. Trying to work in a Catalan because many of you have requested it. Thanks for voting in that recent community post. So let's see what happens here. Okay, now black plays c5, so this may transpose into a Terash. I don't know if I can keep this in independent Catalan territory because c takes d5 is by far the most natural move here. So let's go ahead and play it. Mitrofanov. I wonder if uh, this is an homage to... The composer, I think it's a chess composer, Mitrofanov. There's this famous Mitrofanov's deflection problem, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous composition. You can Google that if you're curious. Okay, knight takes d5. So black recaptures with the knight instead of the pawn, thereby avoiding some structural damage, potentially. This may play more like a conventional Catalan, because I'm thinking about going knight f3 and getting ready to castle. If black ever takes on d4, I take with my knight. I can also try to chase their knight, although in the spirit of the Catalan, I usually don't want to block that, di that diagonal for the light square bishop too soon. Just making sure my setup looks good. Looks fine. Yeah, so let's play knight f3. And if c takes d5, c takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop e4 check, I'll play bishop d2. And usually white's a little more comfortable in those resulting positions, but it can be close. See what my opponent has in terms of ratings for other time controls. I just like to look in case the time gets low, you know, how comfortable are they in bullet, blitz, whatever. Okay, knight c6. So I'm probably going to castle here. I'm waiting to decide if I want to take on c5, if I plan to do that at all, until black moves this dark square bishop, right? So it's possible I can gain some time if I want to. Uh, take only after they move the bishop, or more accurately, make them lose time by moving the bishop twice. That's not a principle you want to overdo, by the way. That's not always going to be relevant. But here, since very likely black does want to castle short, and there is this tension, I kind of sense that black is hesitant to take. Maybe they don't want to be the first one to capture. I'm going to go on that principle. Okay, so black does play bishop e7. So some possibilities here. Again, taking on c5. I think if I were to do that, it would probably be with the intention of playing e4 or maybe a3, b4, bishop b2, something along those lines. I could also think about, about playing e4 directly. could definitely consider doing that. If I kick the knight, though, I'm not exactly threatening d5 thereafter. So say, I don't know, e4, knight f6, d5 is not a safe move to play. Black has more defenders of this square than I have attackers. So considering my options, once again, maybe knight c3. Maybe simply develop here. If knight takes, pawn takes, I'm happy with the defense of d4. If knight c3, c takes d4, I take with my knight. Knight takes c3, b takes c3. Those positions tend to be a little more comfortable for white. I think I'm going to go for that. Yeah, I didn't see any immediate gain in doing this. I probably should have mentioned d takes c5, bishop takes c5, e4. I could try to take the queen on d8, but I don't know that that's going to lead to an enormous advantage, if at all. And again, I'm a little hesitant to block my Catalan bishop's diagonal when there's no clear follow-up uh, aside from just trading queens. So I don't want to just trade queens because I think it's uh, something to do. I want to have some, some follow-up ideas there in mind. Okay, so black does castle. And here I'm thinking about knight takes d5 or e4. I think e4 is a pretty strong candidate move. Because this time, even though I am blocking the bishop, I like the fact that knight takes c3, b takes c3 strengthens my center. It's possible later on this bishop could support a d5 move, like in the middle game. So e4 is a top candidate here. Certainly taking on d5. If we take on d5, I think we're probably headed for a Terash-style position after black takes back. So 
Hmm. That's interesting because it would be a Terash just with the knights having been traded. The queen side knight for me and the king side knight for black. So I'm, I'm drawing on some of my opening experience to decide whether that's beneficial or not. Hard to say. I, I can take on c5 and give black an isolate a pawn at that point. But that that's double-edged. That can work both ways. I think e4 is a little more interesting and combative. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. e4, knight b6, d5. e takes d5, e takes d5, knight b4. Then I'm the one with the isolated pawn, but I have ways I can potentially support it. Knight e5, for instance. Black gets some activity there, though. So e4, knight b6. I mean, I could play bishop e3, but then knight c4. Because I do think if I play e4 and black does not capture, then I'll have to do something about my d4 pawn, whether it's defend it, trade on c5. There's also this possibility, too. Taking, black could take back. This is the thing about the cattle, and I feel it's a pretty nuanced opening. And my position seems comfortable here. I like my options, but it's not clear to me how to navigate these nuances. There's multiple approaches. And the position's like borderline between tactical and non-tactical. There's strategic considerations and some stuff to calculate as well. Yeah, I don't know. E4 is the move I'd like to play, but I haven't really figured out what to do against knight b6. Not quite sure, because d5 is totally consistent there. I mean, maybe I'd go like uh, d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5. Knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, knight b4, knight e5. Kind of far down the rabbit hole, though, at that point, and I don't see that being particularly good. So I'm leaning towards this again, knight takes d5. Possibly this move, d takes c5. So if I take on d5, e takes d5, let's say bishop f4 or d takes c5 there. Let's maybe think about the most forcing continuation, d takes c5 at that point. Bishop takes c5. Knight e1 to d3 could be a decent maneuver. But somehow it doesn't look that challenging. It feels like black is borderline equalizing there. Maybe I could fianchetto my dark square bishop, but there is there is queen f6 against that. I also have bishop g5 in that position. I'm trying to project a few moves out. Bishop g5 could be intriguing. Bishop g5, queen b6, queen takes d5. Then queen takes b2, runs into queen takes c5. But there is bishop e6 after queen takes d5. I feel this is an important decision, too, so I know I'm spending a little time, but this is going to shape the middle game, what I decide to do here. A3, maybe, at that point. Also intriguing. Ah, how about this? So knight takes d5, e takes d5, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, bishop g5, and if queen b6, maybe I play rook c1 target this bishop. That prevents queen takes b2. And I feel like that dark square bishop is a little misplaced for black, actually. Yeah, let's go with that. I've spent enough time here. Now I will try to play the next few moves fairly quickly. Queen takes d5 I didn't really spend much time on, but I have knight e5 at minimum, maybe even bishop e3, but knight e5 would be my default, unleashing the Catalan bishop towards the queen. So black does take. Okay, let's capture here. So I front-loaded my calculation there, folks. I tried to project the next few moves. And I had that luxury because, to me, black's moves look pretty much forced in this sequence. So now I will play the bishop out here. Hit the queen, which is in turn defending this pawn. 
I suspect queen b6 will be played because even though that allows this, there's this bishop e6 move at that point. Uh, but then I could go back to d2. So that's even a possibility. Queen d2. Defending this pawn. I kind of feel like black has some compensation there because they can chase my dark square bishop maybe, like h6. But it's nice to know that I've already identified rook c1 as an option against queen b6. If black plays f6, by the way, I'm happy to simply move my bishop back. Let's say bishop f4. Okay, and black plays bishop e7, which I wasn't that scared of. I could trade. I suspect black's going to take with the queen and then maybe uh, try to attack e2. So if queen takes d5, there's queen takes e2 in reply. Okay. I could play h4. That would be an interesting kind of modern style move. Pawn h4. Not sure I'm entirely convinced by that, but it's possible. Yeah, I think we're headed for a middle, grain, a middle game grind here. Take, take, queen d2. And I try to play against this isolated pawn. Can also attempt to keep the bishops on board, like bishop f4. But then this bishop might get here. That is kind of annoying. My only other option is h4. I'm not sure about h4. There's bishop g4. So yeah, let's go ahead and take. So generally, trading down against an opponent's isolated pawn is, is not a bad strategy because that weakness persists. And it may even be magnified the more pieces that get traded. So I'm not, not upset about having to trade a little bit. But let's see what happens. I think taking with the knight is kind of passive. Reinforces this, but, but queen takes looks correct here. I think I would much prefer to take with the queen if I were black. So queen takes e7. Am I going to dismiss queen takes d5 at that point altogether? Probably, because I don't see a great response to queen takes e2, which does hit my b2 pawn as well. So I'm kind of thinking on queen takes e7. I just play queen d2 and go from there. And maybe I can reroute the knight. I do like the idea of the knight coming to d3 in some cases. But queen d2, maybe black will go bishop f5, bishop e4. Although interestingly, queen takes e7, queen d2, bishop f5 would then run into queen takes d5 because I'd hit the bishop with tempo. Yeah, so maybe black would prefer something like bishop g4 instead. Or bishop e6. And for me, do I want to consider other moves? I mean, rook e1 comes to mind. I'm kind of thinking I want to reserve that square for the knight, but it's probably not a bad option to play immediately if I want. Mm, close call, close call. Maybe no clear answer here. Yeah, let's just play queen d2. I don't want to hem and haw about this move too much. I'd like to retain some time for the middle game. This could shape up to be a longer game. So make sure you have a, a beverage in hand. I've got my decaf coffee. Maybe I should be drinking caffeinated right now. <laughs> but also, you never know. I mean, I, I say this is shaping up to be a grind, but chess has a way of surprising you. So we have to be vigilant for tactics. Maybe I'll get an opportunity to win this pawn. Maybe one of us will blunder. That's always a possibility. For the moment, I feel pretty secure, though. I think tentatively my plan is rookie one. Uh, this rook coming to c1 or d1. A little unclear. Probably knight d4 down the line. It'd be nicer to play knight d4 when black can't trade knights. But if black keeps the knight on c6, that's going to be tough for me to arrange. So I could envision in the middle game some scenario where I have my rook centralized. Probably one rook on the d file, the other one protecting here. Yeah, this might even happen pretty soon. Like if I go knight d4 now, and I'm really leaning on this pawn. I mean, this is like a perma advantage for white. The real question is, can I win this? Can I win this position if it comes to pass? <clears throat> 
Okay, so bishop e6 does strike me as a little bit passive. I could consider knight g5 going after the bishop and unleashing my bishop, but I don't think I really want to trade for that bishop wedged in there. Could play the knight d4 move. That would be completely fine here. I don't think it simplifies too early either. It nicely centralizes my queen if that happens. So that is kind of appealing. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to go for that. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's simply get the knight to the blockading square. That's often the prescription when you're playing against an isolated pawn is blockade the, the pawn first, as Nimzovich instructed. And then later we can look to pressure the pawn and destroy it, hopefully. And now there's little pressure on the e2 pawn. Black just blocked their uh, queen's sight of the e2 pawn. If something like knight takes d4, queen takes d4, black can't play bishop g4 to double attack it because I take. And it may not even be the case that I take one of black's pieces next. I might not be looking to capture. Okay, but black takes me. Obviously, we're taking back. And kind of nice that my queen is here. This is annoying for black, for sure. It's peering at the a7 pawn. So black's going to think twice about moving this rook. Maybe it will convince black to play b6 or a6 somewhere. I can think about bishop takes d5. I don't know that I'm quite ready for that move because there could be a liquidation. Again, I might lose this pawn on e2 at the end. Possibly black will think about queen f6, trying to, there we go, b6. But queen f6 would have offered a queen trade at the expense of wrecking black structure further. Okay. So just to try to rule this out right away, bishop takes d5, take, take, queen takes e2. I don't see much there. That's material equality and black's hitting b2. So I don't think we're going to take. I think taking the file makes a lot of sense here. Got to assume black's going to dispute the file. So rook ac1, rook ac8. Yeah, rook ac1 makes sense though because I think queen c5 is something I may want to prevent. So it's just nice to have a little grip there. Yeah, I don't think the timing is quite correct to put a rook on d1 yet. I'd rather take the c file first. So let's do that. And assuming black puts a rook here, then I'm probably going to play some sort of improving move. Like maybe a3, e3, maybe rook fd1. Although it's possible I can save a rook move if I think black's going to trade at some point. I mean, e3 is handy. I, I, I like the idea of e3 because the e2 pawn is so loose in almost every situation if I don't play e3. Also reinforces my queen. So that does come to mind. The downside of this move is maybe bishop g4 is more annoying in the future if ever black can successfully play that. But that seems like a minimal downside. I mean, I think for the moment, this is going to be a big pawn on e6. This is my type of position. I, I like these technical positions. Just for the record. <laughs> uh, okay, so I wonder if rook c5 is also an idea. That could be a move that black tries to sneak in, now that I think about it. I didn't notice this till now. I probably should have been, been on the ball about that. Because that may influence what I do at this juncture. I wonder, therefore, if I should prefer a move like rook fd1. So on rook c5, take, pawn takes. And although black now has hanging pawns, maybe queen e5 keeps the tension. I do like the look of that. Queen e5, d4. Interesting. Rook c1. There's some pressure for sure that I'm exerting on black's position. I like the idea of rook fd1. I, I don't think I'm afraid of a wholesale rook trade, by the way, because if we trade everything off on c8, I can take on d5 at the end. So yeah, let's play this. Uh, what about rook c4? I need to think about rook c4 too. Yet another move to consider. 
Okay, there's still queen e5, though. Queen e5 could be irritating for my opponent. Or take, take, and queen e5. Probably queen e5 first. Hmm. I wonder if b3 might be more accurate here. Something about b3 doesn't queen seem quite right, though. I was just about to play this, but then rook c4 caught my eye. I mean, I think it's a pretty natural move for black. I'm trying to straighten out the structure. Huh. Rook fd1, rook c4, queen e5, rook c8. And then what? I don't have time to take on d5. Probably looking at having to trade rooks there, so I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, still, though, b3 doesn't look quite right because of queen a3. I don't like giving up that option. Tricky. Tricky decision here, folks. Maybe rook fd1, rook c4, simply queen d2. Go for that. Kind of looking at trades, though, down the file. Rook c8, b3, trade everything on c1, queen c5. I'm still probably a little bit better there, but I, I'd like to keep one pair of rooks on board if I can. And I could play queen e5 right away. It just doesn't seem quite right. So my current thinking is black's best sort of source of counterplay is this rook c4 move. I mean, maybe I am looking to play b3 here. b3 and if queen a3, bring the queen back to d2. Guard this. d5 still weak. I somehow feel like that's going to peter out to a draw. Could move my rook up the board maybe, but it doesn't really address the rook c4 move. Maybe some possibilities of taking on c4 and trying to play that position for an advantage, but the advantage seems kind of slim there. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I'm burning a lot of time. I don't think e3 really helps in any of this. So rook fd1, rook c4, queen e5, rook c8. Just haven't figured out a solution to that. Maybe rook fd1, rook c4, I can play queen e3. It's interesting. Tactically, it doesn't work, though, really. Also, taking here, taking here. Take, take, take e2. I mean, I, I looked briefly at lines like this. Don't know that there's quite enough, though. A rookie 8 or something there. Yeah, I'm really at an impasse here, folks. And I'm burning a ton of time. This is... Non-exemplary time management. Guess I'm going to play the B3 move. Addressing rook c4. I hate to play that after spending so much time, but I didn't really see a solution to the rook c4 idea, which I think is pretty clean for black. It's a, it's a nice move to enable doubling, trying to straighten out the structure. So at least let's try to force black to find something like queen a3 and... Uh, keeping some activity on board. But mostly I need to think practically at this point. I don't want to get below like, you know, one minute or something in a middle game. Even with the 15 second increment. It's still possible they'll play rook c5, by the way. So I think at this point I'd rather play that structure than the one with rook c4. Maybe black will settle for this, but I think queen a3 is a pretty reasonable move too. I would not doubt that that move is a strong consideration. Queen a3, queen d2, 
But at least then Black still has to stu- suffer and think about this DeFi pawn in almost every case. I think pretty decent chance of a liquidation somehow, but some issues for Black to surmount still. Like I, I, I can probably grind that position still. There's a lot of pressure, too. I've got my provisional classical rating on the line, my 2353. <laughs> this is one of these moves that you, you play begrudgingly. I, I really didn't like to play this move, but I thought rook c4 was worth addressing. Let's try to think what I'm going to do against Rook C5, by the way. Rook C5. Could play Rook FD1. And then on Rook C8, maybe take. Yeah, and if Pawn takes, play this Queen E5 move. Kind of like the look of that structure. There is D4 there, but I have some slight pressure, like Bishop H3 even is an idea. I think the alignment of the Queens there is kind of handy for me. There's also a little trick. So uh, rook c5, rook fd1, rook ac8, rook takes c5. There we go. And you know what? I should probably play rook fd1 right away because I've already spent a lot of time. So let's do this. Now, I think pretty good chance black plays rook, rook fc8 here. Did I say rook ac8? I meant rook fc8 if I did. But yeah, rook fc8, rook takes c5, uh, pawn takes c5, queen e5. If black plays the natural f6, challenging my queen, they run into queen takes e6. Queen takes e6, queen takes e6, e6 bishop takes d5, and then I win a pawn. And that would be a nice technical endgame to try to win. I think that's pretty promising for white. This black structure is also a little damaged there. I think I can probably win that. So a little bit of a tactical issue. So look for me to maybe put my queen here or possibly here in the near future. Yep. So if take queen takes, I think I can take d5 is the thing. That should work out. And this is double attack, so let's take. And moment of truth for black, which way to take back? They have three options. I would say pawn takes is a pretty natural one. I, I think... Pawn takes is what you would like to play in theory to try to bring the B and C pawns into proximity with each other. Or the B and the D pawns, I should say, becoming a C and a D pawn. That's the hanging pawn structure. Uh, shout out to Hanging Pawns, the YouTuber, by the way, Stepan. I know a lot of you guys watch his videos. He's great. But I think I have this little bit of pressure. Black may be able to dodge it, but there we go. Takes. Yeah, queen e5. Let's play it. Pretty uh, explicit threat here of bishop takes d5 or possibly rook takes d5. And here's this trap. f6, natural move to try to back off my queen. I mean, I think black's going to see this, but this is the point. So d4 looks plausible here. Saves the pawn, although it does open my bishop. Maybe I could think about rook c1 in response to that. I also mentioned the bishop h3 move, trying to capitalize on the pin. But rook c1 looks annoying too. I want to keep some pieces on board here. I've kind of been alluding to this, but to me, keeping a pair of rooks on board when black has these existing uh, pawn issues is pretty helpful. Also, queens, keeping some sort of major pieces on board is pretty nice. Like a pure bishop ending here, I don't think I can win. Black's king would come up to d6. Yeah, my bishop's always attacking d5. Their bishop might be passive, but it's probably not going to last long. Also, black could play d4. So keeping the heavy pieces on board, at least one pair of heavy pieces, is useful. Okay, so I'm happy with the direction of the last few moves. I've gained a little time back on my clock. I um, 
have forced Black to think a little bit. Black was way ahead on the clock, and although they, they still have double my time, we're both getting lower. And most importantly, I think I've maintained a stable advantage here. If I were to put this in engine terms, like I think I might be about plus 0.5, like half a pawn or something. Maybe 0.75. Or maybe the engine will just say this is barely an edge the entire way, and you don't know what you're talking about, John. <laughs> but the the pace of the battle feels such that I think it's pretty clear that I'm pressing. Highly doubtful black plays f6 at this point. By the way, if they were going to play that, they would have played it earlier. To play f6 now and blunder this would be very surprising to me for a player at this level. But... For many of you out there, your opponents would 100% play f6 in this position. It's such an obvious move. Hits the queen. This queen is annoying. But I think Alexander Mitrofanov knows better. So I think either d4 or possibly... Nah, probably, probably d4. I was just about to say queen f6, but queen f6 doesn't work, because I can take, take, take here on d5, and if rook d8, there's e4. Then f5, I can play f3. Yeah, I, I think d4 is probably going to be the move. Because what else is there, really, for black? I guess I naturally thought black had more options than this, but, I mean, this is... Pretty convincing threat. And if black can't play f6, then what are they going to do? They only have one defender on d5. I have three attackers. So I think stands to reason black should be playing d4 here. So let's invest all our mental effort thinking about what to do against that. I mentioned a couple possibilities. Bishop h3. Rook c1. The upside of bishop h3 is black cannot play f6 there because that just blunders the game. Whereas if I play rook c1 after d4, then f6 is a possibility. But the thing is, I don't think I really care about f6. Even though I can't play queen takes e6, I can play, let's say, queen e4. And I should retain some pressure against these, these pawns here. I have a better bishop. Okay. We're going to be even on time here pretty soon. So d4... I think I'm probably going to play that uh, rook c1 move pretty quickly. I could try something like f4. That feels premature, though. I feel like black might go king f8 somewhere. Wow. Okay. I mean, I take back everything I said, guys. <laughs> I'm pretty surprised by this decision. I got to be honest, because usually when people tank that long, they don't blunder this. I don't think it's possible black saw this line and willingly is going for it. Uh, so... Yeah, I was proven wrong there. I mean, I'm happy about this development, but I did not think they would spend that long and then play this ending. Okay. I mean, maybe Black thinks they can draw this rook ending. It's kind of a dismal ending to defend, so feels like a blunder, but maybe they're thinking they can hold. Is there any advantage to going here? Kind of a funny move? Probably not. I think that would transpose after king e7. Um, that said, sometimes these endings can be subtle. I would like to prevent black from playing c4 coming up. I don't want a full-on liquidation, so I can take, take, play rook d3 and meet c4 with this. That should work, right? Can I win that pawn ending? Yeah, I think that pawn ending should be winning. Okay, let's take. I can also simply play rook c1. I mean, that would be the most secure move. Yeah, maybe I should do that, because I'm probably looking to go here anyways, eventually. That's probably the way to go, huh? Be nice to keep him cut off, though, on the D file, but I don't know how long I can do that. Well, okay, if I play E3, C4, Rook C1... I guess a key thing is, can black go... Like, c3, I can probably start moving my king in. I feel like I should be able to pick up that pawn pretty easily. 
So, hmm. E3, C4 here. Black definitely can't take, right? Because I take on C1 and I can get back in time. Black may move the A pawn up the board. Yeah, I'm debating between keeping my rook where it stands or playing rook C1. So e3, c4, rook c1, king d5. We trade everything off. I mean, I feel like I should win that endgame. I think I'm too fast there. But e3, rook b8, maybe? Do I want to play e4 instead? e4, my pawn's a little more exposed, so I'm not sure. At least rook c1, I know for sure black's probably going to have to move their king over. Yeah, I'm going to go rook c1. I think this might be the most accurate move. And try to send the rook up through c4. Like, absolutely block the c-pawn. Retain some option of playing rook a4. I don't want black easily getting rid of these pawns. For black to draw this game, it would be best if they could trade the queenside pawns and defend with the four versus the three on this wing. Usually that's the case if you're defending a pawn down rook ending. Really, a lot of types of end games you want to try to localize the struggle. Okay, B4, there is C4. Don't think I should do that. So let's play Rook C4. And next, make steady progress. Bring the king in, bring my pawns up. Maybe Rook A4, if allowed, but mostly I'm just happy that black can't easily trade these. Did I mention this was shaping up to be a grind? <laughs> I think I said that shortly after the opening. I'm still pretty surprised about that F6 blunder. But uh, stranger things have happened. It's a pretty miserable ending for black to defend. Like, really tough ending. Because any rook trade should be losing for them under almost any normal circumstances. Being a pawn down, you can't casually trade into a pawn down king and pawn ending unless you know for certain that you as the pawn down side have, have counterplay, hopefully in the form of a passed pawn. So black's kind of stuck keeping the rooks on board, and this rook controls so much territory already, just completely cutting the king off along the fourth rank. Also eyeing up c5. This, this should allow me to make some steady progress. I want to start activating these guys. Bring up my king, too. I don't know what order I'm going to do this in, by the way. Like, e4 is tempting, but I don't know that I even want to play e4 yet. I might take this real slow. e3, king f1, king e2, maybe f3, g4, h4. I have the luxury of all these moves. I'm probably not going to touch these guys, by the way, unless black gives me a clean shot. Like, let's say king d6 for some reason. Then I could play b4, but I can't play b4 with this undefended. So, leaving these alone, maybe I'll throw in the rook a4 move if black's, black's rook gets too active somehow. But mostly, I'm just happy I have options and that black has to make passive moves and wait. Maybe I start with f3. Yeah, it's tough for black. Like, do you play f5 or not? I mean, yeah, I guess that answered that question. <laughs> Makes sense. I go h4 here. I like the look of this. Just to stop g5. It's a pretty handy move in a lot of cases, too. Yeah, let's go h4. Just stop this move. If h6, maybe I play h5. Not saying I will, but maybe. My king is further from the battle here, so that may look like something I should address, but really there's there's not a whole lot of rush here. So f3, king f2. 
That's a possibility. It's also the E3 move. Just take my time. E3, bring the king around. I think E3 is a pretty good one because probably safe bet that that's just going to be helpful for me. Yeah, let's play E3. Maybe black will work up to H6, G5, but in that case, I'm going to be centralizing my king. I'll leave the pawns as is because I would be happy if black plays G takes H4 eventually to take with my rook. So still vaguely shooting for the center of the board with my king. If I could teleport my king to d3 now, b4 would be a threat. Okay, rook, a, rook c6. You know, I'm wondering if I should throw in this move somewhere. Might be good to do it before black even gets a chance to play a5. Because they could consider the a5 move. Yeah, I think I may play it. I have 18 seconds left, so let's bank the 15 extra seconds here. Play rook a4, create a threat. Still keeping that black king cut off. Now probably bring my king over. King f1. Just tying black down to weaknesses. Now the a6 pawn is a liability, restricts the rook. c4 is no good. Take. If rook takes, I can take the pawn. I could probably win the pawn ending as well even with my king situation. Plan for the moment, simply bring the king up and then decide what to do. Tentative follow-up follow plan, f3 and then e4 or g4. Maybe h5, but probably g4 or e4. The king goes over. King e2. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. So nice to play these endings with some increment. Like, play with increment, guys, if you guys want to improve. Because <laughs> clearly, if there was no increment, this would have just been decided long ago. And possibly not in my favor due to my time management. Although I, I would like to think I would have moved faster if there was no increment. Okay, king back to d5. Thinking king d3 here. Probably no reason to force anything. It's totally consistent with what I've been doing. Now, okay, I'm seeing a new possibility. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe I can think about rook c5 and b4. Or rook a5, rather, and b4 to attack c5. I wonder, therefore, if it might make sense for black to play rook d6 and try to do some discovery, like make me choose a side with my king. But rook d6, rook a5, king c6, check, I guess. It's funny that that's a check, but that would be a check. Yeah, black goes there. It's an interesting move. I also have the option of e4 right here if I want. Or g4. g4 also interesting. Make a little room on the rank there. Hmm. You know, I'm going to play king c3, I think, though. Let's go king c3. The only reason I wouldn't play this is if I'm worried about my f2 pawn, but I don't realistically see how black's going to attack that anytime soon. Maybe black will go king e5, but I always can try to bring them back to reality here with rook a5. Okay, black goes passive. Still tricky to make progress, though, not going to lie. Rook a5, king e4. And then rook a5, king e4. Hmm. Okay, let's repeat once. Not sure. Obviously, we're not going to take a draw here. I'm just not sure. Maybe I should go here. Yeah, I'm actually thinking this might be the move now. 
Because although there is king c6, I'm now noticing I even have king c4 as an option. Probably allows rook d2, though, so I don't know that I want to play it. But it could be good. And I don't think I'm risking much, because king c6, I can always decide to play king e2 or king c2 if I want to keep control over d2. Yeah, and black plays a passive move. Okay, so that, that seems like a slight victory for me. I wonder if we're getting into some Zugzwang scenarios. Like, can I play f3 here? Can't play b4 any longer. Let's go f3. I was holding off on playing this move, but seems like the time is right to do it. Again, we're not going to touch these guys. Obviously, moving the A-pawn would drop here. There's no reason to move the A-pawn. Black's king does occupy one further rank compared to mine, so that's why I kind of like this. Okay, so if king c4, rook b4, king here. Maybe I play e4 now. Huh. Let's go king c3 first. I don't know. Just wait for a moment. Rook b4 is not possible. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, I could play a3 at the, like king d5, a3 might be playable. Uh huh. Maybe that's the way we do this. Kind of boxes my rook in a little bit, though. I don't know. King d5, a3. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a little risk here. I don't know if this is a risk per se, but I am threatening b4 now. And if rook here, king d3. And if rook comes back, b4. So I'm trying to capitalize on black's king being on the 6th rank. I think king d6 like might be forced here. But then king c4. I mean, if I could force black to go passive, i got to assume that that's good for me. Yep, black does play that. Let's bring the king up. So there's no rook check now. That's the key difference here. This is almost a Sukhswang, right? G4? Black's almost running out of moves here. Hold on, I got a little time. I feel I'm almost winning now because of how passive Black is. If Black moves the king or the rook, they lose one of these pawns. Could play F4, but I want the E pawn flexibility, so let's go G4. Take. I have e4 if I need it, but also I think I'm just going to out-tempo black with these pawns. Key thing. Well, okay, black can play h6. They could, they could try to force me to tap into e4 or a4, for that matter. Probably wouldn't mind playing a4, actually. a4 is going to be helpful if I assume I'm going to win one of these pawns. They play h5. Um, I think taking should be good. G5 also looks pretty clean. Take, take, A4. Yeah, let's take, take, A4. Because if king e5, take, black can't win that end game. Uh, or they, they will be too slow. If they go after my h-pawn, my b-pawn's running real fast. Probably multiple ways to win this. I think e4 would have been fine. I think g5 instead of g takes h5 would have been fine. So something's got to give here now for black. Can't go into a king and pawn ending. Those are all losing. So I would suspect either um, rook b6. Maybe rook c8. King move, I'm taking on c5, and that's unpleasant because it hits this and this. Or resignation. Okay. Thanks to my opponent for the game. That was a tense one. Got pretty low on the clock, but you can see the effect of that increment. 
Uh, that's why an increment is is useful for playing a high quality chess game because you often either guarantee or greatly increase the chances of a of a result purely on the board. So we're able to play this interesting rook end game as a result. So this was characterized by the f6 blunder. Again, I was surprised that Black thought for so long and then played this move because it it looks like such a natural move to push the queen. I would have thought pretty early on Black would have determined that that move was unplayable. And if they had missed that, they would have played it pretty quickly. But I was wrong about that. I think this is probably a technical win. This is a very difficult end, ga end game for Black. If this pawn were, say, on b6, probably holdable. Because then they have rook c2 ideas. But the fact that they were often babysitting the a and the c pawns in this end game made it super tough to win. I think I played pretty well. I mean, I like my patience. These are my types of positions. I feel I excel in these technical end games. Static positions where there's not a whole lot of tactics going on. It's mostly planning. I really enjoy that. I studied a lot of Karpov, Capablanca, Kramnik back in the day. I'm trying to think if Black could have made my life more difficult at some point. Maybe King C6 is the move here. So King C6 check. I did mention that. King C6, King C4, Rook D2 giving me an option of taking either pawn but playing for counterplay. You would love to activate the rook if you were black in this endgame versus just staying passive. Black chose the passive result uh, option, rather, and you saw the result. Yeah, I think it's lost once we get to here. Earlier on, I think this was a key moment. I, you know, I spent all this time deciding if b3 was correct or not. Uh, well, mostly I was trying to make Rook FD1, Rook C4, Queen E5 work, but this Rook C4 move kept coming back. Time management wise, I don't really like what I did from moves, I don't know, maybe like 9 through 15 or so. I was striving to keep this complicated, and I did manage to keep some of the heavy pieces on board, but I think Black was pretty close to equalizing here. Maybe a couple more accurate decisions. I think Queen A3, I'm going to be curious what the computer says about that. So let's take a quick look. Yeah, so this is a queen's game that declined. I played this Catalan variation. Normally, I play knight c3 here, but again, a lot of you have been requesting Catalan, so I went for it. By the way, it looks like I got a pretty high accuracy. I know you guys like to see the percentages sometimes. So zero, mis zero inaccuracy, zero mistakes, zero blunders, 11 average centi pawn loss. I will take that. My opponent had one inaccuracy, one mistake. Uh, shout out to the people in the chat. In the spectator room. Yeah, so interesting, this C5 option. Let's just see the opening book real quick here. It looks like C, take, C takes D5 is played. Most commonly, there's also Knight F3 developing. Hmm, yeah, maybe that's the more pure Catalan approach. I wasn't familiar with this. I didn't want to have to already here on move five, like think about the possibilities of black taking. Let's say take, do you just castle here? Uh, okay, this line does look familiar, actually, now that I see this. Knight c6. And then is it queen a4? Yep, queen a4. Uh-huh. So there's some interesting possibilities here. Bishop d7, and then white can try to regain this pawn. Yeah, you can see a, a Magnus game being cited here. Game of Dings, MVL, Geary. Okay, so this is actually a pretty popular line as well. I wonder if that's with black playing knight c6. Yeah, yeah, that is with knight c6. Okay. Um, instead, though, I took, and e takes d5. We'd be in a terash now, I think. Safe to say, like knight f3, knight c6. It's still saying cattle in opening, but this is a terash. Yeah, bishop e7. White has lots of possibilities. I mean, I haven't played knight c3 yet, so that's the only thing that makes it unique, but probably will be playing that soon. Mm, okay, so knight f3 might have been the more pure Catalan approach. I wasn't familiar with that. So I took on d5, pretty natural move, take towards the center. And black took, took back with the knight. Pawn takes I would have expected to be played more often. But again, we're in a terash position if that occurs. Okay, so knight f3, knight c6, castles, bishop e7. Yeah, so D takes C5 is played here a fair amount, and the winning percentage looks great for white. D takes C5, so what can I learn from this? I didn't really think this was much. 
But how do they play this? A3? Okay. I think I mentioned this possibility. And then what? Queen C2 or B4? Queen C2. Bishop E7. All right. Rook D1. This also looks more Catalan style than perhaps I played it. E4 threat on the way. Bishop D7. And then E4. Yeah, so these positions are subtle. Like when I think of Catalan, I think of a high quality opening seeking to put long term pressure on Black's position, often from a distance with this Fian Kettled Bishop, with lots of move order subtleties and uh, small differences in the setups that can become uh, revealed deeper into the, the opening or into the middle game. So that's why I don't recommend Catalan to lower rated players. I think it's just too subtle of a setup. But it is fascinating. And if you like it, I know many of you follow like Christoph Selecki's Keep It Simple D4 course for white, and he recommends the Catalan. There's a lot to be appreciated here. It's just quite subtle. So Okay, so D takes C5 is a possibility, playing along the lines of what I just showed. I played Knight C3 because I would have been happy about this transformation. I think if we liquidate in the center here, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, nice pawns. This e4, d5 becomes a plan later. Black solid, but a little passive. So black castled. We're still following a ton of games. I played knight takes d5, most common move. Yeah, e4, I wasn't sure about knight b6. And indeed, that is played a lot here. Okay, there is some theory. d takes c5, not d5, because yeah, d5 didn't seem quite so convincing. Take, take, knight b4. Even here, a lot of games, though. Look at that. 35 games with 91, 17 with 95. 91, not a move I considered, but that does defend d5. Also, it defends these squares. So if bishop f5, we have nothing to fear on c2. That, that's a nifty move. I'll keep that one in mind. I only thought about 95 to defend, but I think that might be a little weaker. Bishop d6 hits the knight. This doesn't look as appealing somehow. Although Karpov played this against Tall in 1977. <laughs> Don't you just love chess history? <laughs> Traveling back in time here. It's nice to know when you play a line that you just see all these amazing players of the past and present, though. You feel connected to chess. And it feels good when you, you were struggling in-game and you see, oh, like Geary played this, Magnus played this, Karpov played this. It's just a cool feeling. Okay, so I'm going to keep that in mind that e4 is playable here and I don't have to fear knight b6 because if I knew about that possibility, I would have probably have gone for this. And again, I don't mind playing this position either. Like strong center. Yeah, the bishop's blocked for a little bit, but that looks fine. Again, we have we can build around this center. We can advance d5. Many, many possibilities from here. So that, that does seem a little more challenging because you could kind of tell in the game, I was trying to express this. I wasn't happy with having to trade so many pieces. Yes, I have a slight structural advantage here. And yes, I did play d take c5 now. Still following a ton of games, by the way. I uh, wonder if we've transposed to a Terash line again. But I think what we're working with advantage-wise here is pretty slim. Like, I feel like Black should be able to draw this if they play this right. Okay, Bishop G5. Still following the database. Bit of a split here. F6, Queen D7, Queen B6 all get played. Queen B6 was the move I was most concerned about, and I was going to go Rook C1. Still following 40 games. Wow, this is heavily theoretically trodden stuff, apparently. <laughs> well, thanks to those of you who suggested that I play the Catalan because I'm, I'm learning something in this video. And then D4. Okay, shoving the pawn forward before white can blockade on this square in the future, maybe. Yeah, very interesting. Queen C2. There's some games here. Bishop D6. Knight d2, maneuvering. Yeah, trying to look for this, perhaps. Bishop e6. Huh. This is just a maneuvering fest, and just the big imbalance is that black has this isolated pawn, and white structure is otherwise fine. Albeit with some potential weaknesses, like if you play the a or b pawns forward, there are some weaknesses that are created. Sometimes the e2 pawn's a target. But this is also shaping up to be a long, complicated game. Instead, though, bishop e7 was played. Yeah, f6, by the way, I wouldn't have minded retreating my bishop somewhere. I think I mentioned f4, but it looks like they play bishop d2 a lot, too. Maybe with this idea, bring the knight here. 
rook c1. The d3 square is nice for the knight. It's anchored. Lots of places it can jump to. Okay, so bishop e7. We traded the bishops. Still following a few games. Now, black has never lost in this position. In the master's database, at least. What about the Lee Chess database? Probably there's going to be more games. Yeah, white scores pretty well in the Lee Chess database. Make sure you take a look at that, by the way. I often click back and forth between the two when I'm analyzing. The Lee Chess database has far more games. The Masters database is um, serious, usually tournament games, some correspondence as well. But the Lee Chess database is every game on Lee Chess to have reached these positions. So you see a lot of games, you can kind of track trends, especially at your rating level. Okay, so I played queen d2. We're kind of getting out of the master's database now. One game left here where black went rook d8, but my opponent played bishop e6. Yeah, I didn't feel strongly at this point about a particular path. Like, queen d2 seemed fine. And then I thought knight d4, why not? I'm probably going to play this in the future anyways. Maybe I could drive some benefit by delaying it, but I see even in the engines line, knight d4 is up there pretty soon. Yeah, so we traded b6, stopping any queen takes a7. Yeah, you know, in view of the struggles I had coming up, I wonder if this is actually a bit of a mistake. Rook a c1. And again, I'm not taking here because it just seemed to me that this was completely fine for black. Black evens up the material. They're hitting b2. Yeah, black hasn't moved a pawn around their king, whereas I have, but that's, that's not going to be relevant unless I was hitting something like the rook on a8 and it was undefended, or I was immediately threatening a back ranker. This is very subtle. I, I think rook ac1 is probably a little bit of a mistake. It's not in the top five moves. It's a natural move. Yeah, it's actually suggesting this queen e5 move immediately threatening this. Interesting. And then it says just play rook c8 anyways. Take queen c5 and pin e4. Seen a lot of endings of this type where even if black takes on d5 and then just tries to force me to stay guarding this pawn at all times, even that can be really difficult for white to win. Because here black's position is perfect aside from just being down a pawn. But everything else about their position is fine. So I guess I won't spend too much time on this because I'm mindful of the video length. These are already long videos, but you know I, I think rook c1, just gut instinct, is probably not the best try for an advantage. It's a natural move. But I bet there's something more testing. E3, rook fd1 maybe. I don't know though. I mean, yeah, I guess I could see something like this where I give black the file. Maybe don't even stress rook c4. Try to come here. I mean, I, we're working with razor, way, razor slim margins here. Razor thin margins. In a lot of cases where black might be able to lose the pawn, give up the pawn, and still have enough activity to draw. In some end game. Yeah, I really spent a lot of time here. I spent, what, five minutes? Five minutes on the move B3 of my eight minutes or so. Okay, I am proud that it's one of the top moves, but <laughs> unfortunately, it's not much better than any other move here. So I, I think the engine is basically saying, yeah, Black's, Black's fine if they, if they play this correctly. So again, I, I kept looking at this, but I couldn't solve this Rook C4 move. Because I felt like if take, take, black's fine structurally. Didn't see any problems for them here. And if I play this queen e5 move, trying to get cute with bishop takes d5, what am I doing on rook fc8, which threatens to take the rook? Yeah, if I have to take or move the rook to b1, a1, that just didn't seem... That didn't seem like I was playing for a win. So this was, this was my toughest decision of the game, b3. It sounds silly because we're still in the middle game here. It's just a little pawn move. But there was a lot that went into that, mainly trying to address rook c4. And what about queen a3? I felt like this was a good move for black, and that's why I was hesitant to play b3. I didn't want to allow this counterattack here, and indeed, that seems like a good move. It's not only a2, but also just directly the rook, so I can't even take here, because I would lose the game. So I was probably going to play queen d2. Yeah, this just isn't very much. Rook fd8, like what am I going to do about the c-file? If ever I try to go rook c2 and take the file, black can take and then put their rook on c8, take the file for themselves. 
So I think that would have been a good shot for black, queen a3. I'm not going to say they're instantly equalizing here. I'm still going to make them work for it here. Uh, maybe they can go a5, a4 to further liquidate because, re again, remember, if black could trade off pawns, this is beneficial for them in drawing this game. It makes it harder and harder for me to keep winning material on board. So that's what I would have done as black. Instead, rook c5 gave me a little life. Rook fd1. And then when this double up happens, take. Yeah, and if, if black takes with the queen looking for a queen trade, well, now I take. And we're in an end game similar to the game where I'm going to be up a pawn. Uh, black's structure is a little bit better, but they have issues. They can't play rook c2 at the end note because they get back ranked. Right? Very important. If they had already played g6, well, maybe they're fine because that would be a double attack, but not in that case. So already, like, small problems start to appear for black after takes. The engine is kind of torn between rook takes and b takes. Yeah, rook takes would have been interesting. Crossed my mind, like, maybe I could play e4 here. Idea this and this. But, of course, black plays queen f8 so as not to get back ranked. And maybe there's not much. I have some cheeky ideas here, but it looks like black can cover. Rook defends the queen. So, yeah, I probably would have... Try to maneuver around, expand, yeah, h4. Maybe again, queen e5. Try to provoke some weak weakness or something. But rook c5 looks playable too. Okay, so instead, b takes c5, queen e5, top move. It's still small. The advantage we're working with here is still small. And as I talked further about this position, you guys heard me mention, I thought d4 was basically forced here due to the three attackers on that square. Would have been interesting. See what happened. I was planning this move. Engine says black can play queen c7 to help defend here. Look for a queen trade. And it's giving dead equal in this position. Yeah, because these pawns, if I can't attack them, that's conducive to opening up black's bishop, maybe playing c4 somewhere. It's nice that black has control of the c4 square, unlike in the game. I mean, if ever I play e3... I would take on an isolated pawn, so that's that's probably true. Black's probably fine. Thought about bishop h3 here too. King f8 though. Wasn't sure if I wanted to trade bishops or not. I wasn't seeing much coming out of this. If we get into an endgame like this, it's almost certainly fine for black. No, no reason I would be better here. So that that was it. D4. The game game's gonna continue. E3 looks interesting. Yeah, take. I mean. Still modest, even after these trades. Like, still a modest, uh, slim advantage here I'm working with, just based on black having some weak pawns. Isolated A and C pawns versus my A and B. But still some work to be done for black to try to hold this. Not so easy to liquidate. Like, what happens if C4? Take, oh, I'll check this out. Can't take with the bishop because the queen takes E7. So rook takes C4, and here's where that lack of a G6 or A6 move comes in. Queen takes A7. Deflection. deflection. <laughs> if queen takes, rook d8 is checkmate. But black surprised me. They went from 754 down to 333 and played the blunder f6. And I really feel like black should lose after that move because of what happened in the game. Take. Bishop takes d5. And the net result of this is that I win a pawn. Yeah, and note here... So if take, take, c4, can't remember if I mentioned this line in the game, but I saw it. Uh, I can take, and then importantly, I have rook d8, king f7, rook d7. Everything with check, and I pick up the pawn on a7. Let's say here to defend this. Take. I've already played g3, just so nice to have the back rank issue solved in these positions. My king's going to come up, and up two pawns, I'm going to win this. Still some technique required, but this is winning for white. Looks like black can also try to play rook c6. Maybe a slight difference in the rook ending there, but yeah, I feel pretty good about how this rook ending went down. Rook c1. Yeah, rook c4. The engine approves of all this, just blocking black from freeing themselves. h4. Just taking my time. I wonder if black maybe should have thought about a5, but does that really change much? I can still go rook a4, yeah, force them to play rook a8. This might be a little bit different, but I'd pr still probably try to bring up the king. Maybe a3, b4 in some circumstances. Try to take advantage of the pin here. 
Interesting. I feel like I explained this pretty well in the game, so I'm going to spare the absolute fine details here. We did repeat the position once. Looks like king e5 is what the engine wants my opponent to do. It actually suggests I go king e2 here. I don't know, though. This end, the, the end game is already um, heavily favorable for me, probably winning, so I think I'm winning with all these different moves. But it was kind of decision time for me right around here. I played rook a5. Yeah, and it seems like king c6 is the engine's suggestion. What if I go king c3 here? Then king b6. Okay. So this did happen, right? So king c3, king b6, rook a4. I probably would have done this. But yeah, then I guess the rook gets in here, doesn't it? That's the one thing. If black could activate the rook, maybe black has chances. So hard to say what I would have done. Like... Maybe I would have played king c2 or king e2. Let's say king c2. So then the rook can't come in. King b6, rook a4. Then things might shift. Instead of playing on the queen side so much, I may try to make a pass pawn on the king side somewhere. f3, e4, f3, g4 down the line. Things could, could be a little bit different at this point, though. That, that was probably still interesting had black done that. So feel free to take a look at that if you really want to dig into the analysis. Yeah, and I think around here we're getting to a point where black is nearly in Suksuang. Because I had this plan of A3, B4. Lots of pawns on the third rank right now, but keeping black out. And I'm trying to use this, this lateral pin. Okay, maybe one final attempt here. Rook E6. Attacking this pawn. King D3. Rook D6. Okay, and it still says I'm winning. Because of B4 coming, but I would have to move my king around a little bit. But yeah, b4 still coming because if king c6, black runs into rook takes a6. So I think it's safe to say once I get in a3, it's pretty clean. Black retreated. I brought my rook up. Yep. And here my goal is just run black out of moves because I saw that they were going to be in Suksuang with this formation if they run out of pawn moves. I think g4 does the job. I thought they might play h6 here. But probably many moves I can play. G5, H5, A4 would be fine. At some point, it's going to look like this, and something's got to give. The position's going to collapse for black. So they played H5, take, take. A4, E4 also looks fine. And black resigned, which is probably fine. I mean, let's say something like this. I can come over here, scoop up this pawn, just to make sure there's no possibility of black getting a past H pawn. Then we'll win it, win c5. Too many pawns for me. Okay. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this game. I think this was a nice technical game. I played a lot of games like this in my chess career. I fully admit, like, this is the style of chess that I like. It may not appeal to everyone, but I like accumulating these advantages and, and winning over time. That said, though, when you have a style like this, there are moments where, you know, because I'm not taking as much risk as some players sometimes. Maybe this is partly due to the opening, this grindy Catalan, but I really did feel like Black was close to equalizing here. I'm not going to pretend this was one-way traffic this entire game. Like, had Black played Queen A3, I think they could have drawn this game with some reasonable play. And even later, you saw that D4 move. If Black hadn't blundered F6, they had played D4. This is barely an edge for White and probably just equal in all likelihood. Okay, interesting game. Hope you guys learned something from that. You Catalan aficionados. Um, hopefully everyone picked up a thing or two with that rook ending. Remember, rook end games are the most common type of endings in chess. I think in 100 end games, you must know they say they happen in roughly 8% of games overall. Uh, so always good to know your rook endings. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for sticking around for the analysis, analysis gang. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.